15 assets that are making people rich. Welcome to Investor TV, the place where the next billionaires come to get inspired and invest to do better. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Hello investors, it's exciting to have you back for another very interesting motivational video. Most of us are interested in building wealth. So we took a look at what makes up the portfolio of the most richest individuals and what they are doing to get better and richer. This one isn't focused on how to make money. Instead, what you do with the money coming in to fortify your wealth, create a network, and create a lifestyle that grows your assets. Buckle up, investors. You're about to receive one hell of an education today. It's going to be worth a billion. But first, the super basics for those of you new to this terminology. You need to learn the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities cost you money. This is one of the fundamental concepts that differentiates between the rich and the poor. The more assets you have making money for you, the richer you are. Pretty simple stuff, right? Well, stay tuned to know all about creating assets and getting them to grow and make money for you. With that being said, there are 15 assets that are making the rich even richer. Number one, mutual and index funds. If stocks allow you to purchase shares in a company one by one, mutual funds and index funds bring in multiple companies together, so you're buying into the entire basket of companies as a whole. This concept is not new and benefits you to a large extent. Why is this better? Should you be doing it as well? Let's find out. Basically, you're more diversified, so it's a safer investment to make. Statistically, index funds are the best performing asset class. The five most popular index funds are the following in no particular order. Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, Spider SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust, iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, and Schwab S&P 500 Index Fund. If you want to start buying stocks one at a time, you're statistically more likely to make major mistakes and lose a lot of money. But you're not going to be one of those miracle traders that beats the market. You're over here. You don't have that kind of info, and it's super complicated to try and compete with the big sharks and tigers. That's where index funds come in. S&P 500 brings together the best 500 performing companies. When a company falls off the top 500, it gets replaced with another great performing one. The average annual total return for the S&P 500 index over the past 90 years is about 9.8%. Out of the five mentioned, Vanguard is our top performer. Index funds should be in every successful person's portfolio. If you are looking to build wealth long term, then look no further. If this is something you're interested in and want to invest in, the best resource available for this is a book by Tony Robbins called Money, Master the Game in which all of this is broken down for you step by step and gives you an edge in the competition. We recommended it to our parents as the go-to resource for retirement. Number two, bonds. We're going to give you the Eli 5 version of this. When governments or businesses might be in need of cash, they can issue up something called bonds, which gets sold to the interested investors. The investor holds these bonds as a store of value. Through these bonds, the government or the business vows to pay the person buying the bonds a certain amount of money every month. This is a great source of cash flow. Generally, bonds have an expiry date on them from one month up to 30 years, depending on what you're going for. These are super safe investments because they're mostly backed by the government and they have a fail-safe business plan to rely on. But as you probably know by now, low risk in business translate to low rewards as well. The safer you play it in the investing world, the lesser you're going to make. Bonds are usually in the 3% yearly return range, which is better than what most banks offer, but not high enough to get a beginner investor excited. In case you are interested in bonds, you are on the right track to becoming a good investor. When the bond reaches its end, the principal amount is returned to the investor with interest. The main ways people buy bonds are, one, directly from the Treasury Department, or two, through a brokerage firm. Number three. Stocks. Stocks may seem like rocket science, but they are not as complicated as those Wall Street firms make you believe. Stocks are an easy way for you to own a percentage of a publicly traded business. If a business issues 10 million shares and you own 1 million of those shares, you're a 10% owner in the business. Let's just think big for a minute. Imagine owning 10% of Apple or Amazon. 
the returns you are going to get are going to be massive. This incredible breakthrough in financial instruments has allowed the average person to own a stake in some of the most lucrative and profitable companies of our day, with very low entry barriers. Here's how much you need to pay to purchase one share into these companies, making you an owner in one of them. There are many platforms out there that allow you to purchase this type of share and invest in the stock market. The most common trending platforms for buying and trading stocks right now are Plus500, eToro, Trade24, Robinhood, Revolut, and so on. Robinhood should sound familiar to all you investors, as it was the center of some big news recently. Comment your opinion on the event and tell us if the hedge funds were doing the right thing. By the way, you're not affiliated with any of these companies, although they should reach out since it would be a great case study breaking down how to make money using these platforms. We'll keep an eye out for an email. Number four, real estate. Real estate, this is a big one. We personally love real estate. It is a huge advantage to own this asset. Owning this is never a loss. Why, once again? Two reasons. One, rent money is coming in every single month with a minimum amount of work and time. If you're a bit smarter, you can take advantage of the technology improvements happening right now, and instead of traditional rents, do short-term rental for higher yields. Think Airbnb, but it isn't as passive. Two, the second argument is appreciation. Population numbers are going up, even with the coronavirus outbreak, and more and more people need a place to stay, live, or rent, either for short or long periods of time. The demand is increasing, so prices for properties are constantly going up, and they forever will, making real estate one of the best investments one could possibly make in terms of real estate assets. The advantages are numerous and deserve another video of its own. Leave us a comment and let us know if you want us to make a video only for real estate. You have one residential building. People live in your properties and pay. You rent two office buildings. People work on your property and pay. You rent three commercial buildings. Businesses use your space to sell stuff and pay you rent or land, which can be cultivated, developed, or even left for appreciation. Super important. Remember, we told you that you need to know what is an asset and what is a liability. So the house you live in isn't an asset, it's a liability. It costs you money to live in it while it isn't putting any new money in your pocket. Number five, cash. Straight up, cash in a bank deposit is earning you interest. Pretty straightforward. The rate of interest depends on banks. It's not a great investment, but an investment indeed. The downside is the interest paid up by these banks these days isn't even keeping up with inflation. But cash is still a priority. Apple, the company has over 200 billion in cash reserves. That's liquidity. So why do you think rich people keep such a good part of their wealth in cash reserves? Two reasons. One, being able to access any opportunity that presents itself, which is pretty self-explanatory. The deal of your dreams is in front of you and you don't have the money to take advantage of it. This is one of the main reasons why rich people save cash. It makes perfect sense when an opportunity comes knocking at the door. And two, the second reason is because they could get higher returns straight from cash deals. Not only do people offer better pricing for cash, but you can also lend money with high interest. This practice is called peer-to-peer -peer lending. It's a very lucrative business, highly profitable. It can be the main source of income if done right. If you're low on income and willing to take the risk, there are plenty of platforms out there that offer peer-to-peer -peer lending services. Basically, you lend people your money and they pay you back with interest. The average bank is offering under 1% on your deposit, while peer-to-peer -peer lending fluctuates from 7 to as high as 15 to 20%. Please keep in mind that if something is too good to be true, it probably is. Maintain a rational mind whenever investing. Number six, equipment. Anything that generates money for you or helps you make money faster is considered an asset. If you're a musician, the instrument is an asset. If you're a photographer, the camera is an asset. If you're an Uber driver, your car is an asset. Whether or not something is an asset or liability changes depending on if it had a direct correlation to the money you're making. Unless your income is directly dependent on the car, Buying one counts as a liability. It's very often that people mix up the two. They try to justify it as an asset, when in reality, they're mismanaging their own finances due to the lack of self-control and knowledge. 
you don't need the most expensive laptop on the market to watch YouTube videos. Number seven, trademarks. If patents protect your invention, trademarks protect your symbols, words, or phrases. It's pretty obvious why this is a big deal when it comes to the logo or the name of a brand. But here's where things get super interesting. If you own a valuable trademark that has a marketable value, you can license it to people to use it for commercial purposes, and they pay you in return. Sounds good, right? Our all-time favorite story is the one of Michael Buffer, who in 1992 trademarked the catchphrase you can now see on your screen. It's super catchy, entertaining, you know exactly how it sounds, and every single time it's set in a commercial manner, you need to write a check to Michael. Since trademarking it, he's made over $400 million just from one catchphrase. Beyonce trademarked the name of her daughter, Blue Ivy Carter, before she was born, just to make sure nobody uses it commercially. Trademarks can be local or international, but good luck enforcing it. Here's an interesting fact. One in five U.S. companies says there are companies in China infringing on their intellectual property. This is actually one of the main reasons why China has been growing so quickly. They have no regard to trademarks and IPRs, the complete disregard for intellectual property rights. China is stealing over $600 billion in IP from the rest of the world every single year. But anyway, let's get right back to the assets that make you rich. Number eight, patents. Patents are awesome for those of you unfamiliar with them. When you invent something new, you can protect your invention by filing a patent. It's a document that certifies you as the inventor and describes in detail what your invention is. With this protection in place, companies have to pay money in order to use your innovation. If they don't, you get to sue them. Patents are incredibly powerful and valuable in the business world. A single patent can make you rich, and all the best inventions are backed by patents. Patents are very important. They help you out if your invention is being stolen or misused. Just to put things into perspective, here are most of the U.S. patents received last year. And here's the company with the most U.S. patents granted every year. But it's not just big companies that rely on patents. Remember the Slinky? It made over $3 billion in sales. Scott Tillinger invented the Koosh Ball, which got bought out by Hasbro for $100 million back in 1997. Now that's a sale worth millions. That animatronic fish you saw in everyone's wall a few years ago called Big Mouth Billy Bass is also worth over $100 million. And the list goes on. Magic 8-Ball, Hula Hoops, or anything you've seen on Shark Tank or the Talus Shopping Center. Thank you for being an investor, and we'll see you soon.